Good morning, everyone. I wanted to take a few minutes to explain to you how I'm using technology to change the way that I'm doing things in the classroom. Um, I see a lot of changes coming, and it, to be honest with you, at first I was very uncomfortable with implementing a lot of technology into the classroom, but uh, with some new tools and some experience, I feel much more comfortable now. So I wanted to let you take a peek inside and see what I'm doing um, to enhance my teaching and my students' learning with technology. So what have I been up to? A few things have been happening in my classroom. Um, started about 10 years ago by way of a website. Of course, that is you know, what I consider a one-stop shop for students and parents. Um, there's everything there from home pages to pages of daily details of what we're doing that day, what the assignment is, possibilities of downloading it from home if they're absent. Um, I'll get more into that in just a few minutes. Second, um, what's possible is narrated PowerPoints, which are very easy to do just using the PowerPoint you have preloaded on your classroom computer. Uh, third, Elmo recordings. Uh, believe it or not, this is very, very simple to make a recording either on paper or in your classroom in front of your board and then upload it to YouTube. And lastly, I've been experimenting with something called screencasting lately, which is what you're looking at now. Um, I started it last year. It was pretty rough in the beginning, and you know, at times it's it's even rough now. But uh, they get better each time, and you get more comfortable speaking in front of a camera and in front of a microphone. So I wanted to take you through them one at a time. Um, I don't want to take up too much time, so we'll roll through these pretty quickly. Um, the alternate room uh, that I use, of course, is my website. And I find, for, for me personally, I have some critical pieces that I think have to be there. Uh, first of all, there's a home page for every subject that I teach. Um, this year I have one for AP Bio and I have one for Chemistry. Branching off that home page, I have what are called daily details. And on these daily details pages, just a written account of what we did on a given day and possible links for downloads from students if they're absent that day from school. Um, third, I have what's called a depot, and I just put basically everything I hand out in class is available there. So if I make reference to it in the, um, in the daily details, the students can just go to this depot and either download the document and print it from home, or they can at least open it and do it on regular paper, which is fine by me. And uh, lastly, as far as a critical piece, I think it's kind of important that you have a bio page. Um, give your students an idea of where, who you are, where you come from, what your interests are. Um, you know, because some of them do take interest in that. Um, some extra things that are possible, uh, things that I'm using right now, are videos. Uh, of class content, links that I find um, very important or um, that explain something we're talking about in class very well. I'll link those to a link page. And um, you can even have a student photo page to show you know that you care about what they're doing in the classroom. They like to look at themselves, we know that. Um, so as long as there's no names on the paper, a uh, student photo page is always a nice thing to have as well. Um, I'll give you a brief uh, look at mine right now. So this is my website here. You can see I have a number of links at the top. This year I'm teaching chemistry and AP biology, so each one has its own homepage. You also see there's AP daily details, chem one daily details. I have what's called a video vault, um, a photo page for the students and a document depot page. I also have a frequently asked question parent page, which they seem to utilize and, and comment about. And then um, just a bio page uh, for students to look and see who I am and the parents can get an idea of who their teacher is as well. Okay, so that's the website. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we would do a narrated PowerPoint. So you'll find that narrating PowerPoints is actually pretty easy. Um, all you really need to do one is a microphone. So um, the microphone in your computer in your classroom probably isn't going to do the job well enough. It's just not going to have the sound clarity. So what I did was I went out and I bought um, this little guy right here. It was like 20 to 30 bucks. Um, the sound quality is much better. In fact, I hear my neighbor doing his leaf blowing. It's probably coming through a little bit right now. So I'm going to have to, in post editing, I'm going to have to try to edit that out of there. But uh, anyways... Um, it's very simple to do, and one thing I noticed when I was looking around um, at the different high schools that are offering online components 
is a lot of times it's just the teacher narrating their PowerPoint, which, you know, I didn't find a whole lot of interactivity or value in it. Um, however, you know, if you design PowerPoints right, using fill in the blanks and pop-ups and movement, it can actually work for you. Um, so I'm going to show you real quick how to do a narrated PowerPoint. Um, it's extremely fast and hopefully uh, you'll consider it. So this is the slide view of PowerPoint, and this is just one of my PowerPoints, happens to be on digestion. So all you have to do is you go up to where it says slideshow, and you hit record narration, and it's going to ask you um, what your sound input device is. Mine's called a blue snowflake, it's just a little microphone, and then I hit record. Um, what's going to happen is my slide has now popped up, and it's currently recording things that I say. So I'll go ahead and stop it right now and I'll play it back so you can get an idea of how this works. But it also records the pop-ups that you do along the way. And uh, if you're doing fill in the blank, that can work for you if you, get, uh, uh, if you get crafty with the way that you present your PowerPoint. Okay, so I'll stop it and we'll take a look at how that works. So it's exporting the movie now. Um, I don't want to, I don't have slide timings just because, you know, in this case, I've only gone through one slide. So I'm going to click, I'll click yes anyways. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll play it and we'll see how that works. So I go to slideshow, view slideshow, and... Okay, so you get the picture. All right, so that's how you narrate a slideshow. Once you save it then to your website or whatever, students who download it can then play it and watch it and hear you talk at the same time. The next thing that I started using a couple years ago uh, were Elmo recordings. And what I was able to do with these is do the recordings in class um, using the equipment we have in our classroom and uploading it then to YouTube. Um, you know, when I first started wondering, you know, why can't I record things in the classroom? Um, I was always told it would just be too much data. Um, nothing could store that much. But now, of course, with YouTube, um, they don't even put limits on how much that you can upload um, in an educator capacity. So I have plenty of videos up there that are an hour in length and high def. And there's no problem. They store it. Um, I don't have to store it on my computer once it's up. And I can delete it at any time. So um, using your Elmo, um, it can be effective. Uh, especially for those teachers who you know, are showing some kind of uh, strategy for problem solving or some kind of lengthy process. I know that I have a couple lessons that are like a half hour in length, and if I have six students absent that day and I have to reteach it six times, a half hour each, that's three hours out of my life, where if I just record it one time, upload it to YouTube, I can have the students visit the computer in the classroom, they can go right to YouTube, pop in their headphones, watch it, catch up, and then be at the same spot where the rest of us are at. Um, so, you know, that's one option using, you know, the Elmo facing straight down and you on paper talking into a microphone. Now, the other way, if you're a little bit more brave, you can actually turn the Elmo on yourself, get in front of your board, and you can actually just make a movie of you teaching in front of your whiteboard. Um, some people aren't comfortable with that, but that's your call. But let me show you an example of um, how I use the Elmo and put it on YouTube. When you add or subtract measurements, your answer must so this here is what it's going to look like if you do it on paper and i'll just fast forward it to the action if you will and you know it's just me talking and explaining how to do some problems in chemistry and you know the students can watch it as many times as necessary uh to get the pattern down of the problem or whatever it is that you're doing and it can be an effective way that they can review or or if they were you know embarrassed or afraid to ask a question in class they can watch it and pause it at home um if it's a long talk they can you know blow off some steam come back to it um at a later time so that's that's what the uh, you know what's possible by doing this particular thing um i don't do any i haven't done any where i turn the camera on myself but i guess i'm kind of doing that right now so um it's pretty much the same thing the last type of technology that uh, I'll talk about implementing in the classroom is called screencasting. It's what I'm doing right now. Um, for this, you need a little bit more equipment. Um, this one, you need some form of webcam that's you know, either a standalone or, uh, for me, it's on my MacBook. Um, you need the microphone, 
and now I use a writing tablet. So the writing tablet allows me not just to narrate my PowerPoints and, and show me while I'm doing it, but I can also write things to demonstrate certain ideas. So um, I can, you know, draw diagrams, I can use it to point to things, whatever I want, I can utilize my uh, writing tablet at the same time and it's kind of like an orchestra of you know of, of you getting all these things going at the same time so it can be a little bit nerve-wracking at first when you get started my first videos are really really bad um, but they get better over time so um, I got a little bit more comfortable um, it still makes your brain think about 10 different ways at once but I know that some teachers use scripts and that might make things easier I usually just kind of wing it you know I know my material and I just I just roll with it and if I make a mistake I make a mistake I'm human um, so here are some of the tools that you need um, this is my writing tablet down here this is called a bamboo this is probably like the cheapest one um, I was looking at the pictures of them there's like 10 of them that are better than mine this is just a standalone type of webcam um, this you could use or you could use a laptop that has a camera on it and in the case of my MacBook uh, my camera sits right there so it's really easy to do this and uh, of course, like I mentioned, it is challenging. Um, it is cutting edge though too. I think you're gonna see more and more of this on YouTube. Um, if you watch videos of education, you know, while you're online, check them out. You'll, you'll see these pop up. And uh, the last thing that you're gonna need is a program that records what goes on your screen, such as Camtasia or ScreenFlow. Um, I use ScreenFlow because I'm on a Mac product. Uh, most of the time it works well. Sometimes it gives me a headache, but uh, it's out there and uh, you know, it's, it's a little costly right now, but uh, I know Camtasia offers free um, trials, and if you like it, you can purchase it. I know we spend a lot in our classrooms already. You know, what's another hundred bucks? <laughs> All right, so um, let me show you an example of a, of a screencast other than the one you're watching right now. Um, so this is um, a lesson that I give in chemistry. And uh, my wife is a video producer. I did not do that myself. And I, of course, recorded this one at Cousineau, so, uh, you know, my, my classroom was my studio that day. Um, right now I'm outside. I can do this anywhere, you know, in any room in the house. It doesn't matter. Um, usually I don't like to have that much busy uh, stuff going on in the background, but, you know, at the time I had to drop that video at that moment, and uh, that was the best place for it. Okay, so um, who am I helping by doing this? Um, first of all, first and foremost, where I got the idea was about 10 years ago when I thought, how can I catch my absent students back up to where the rest of us are at? Um, it can help high flyers who just want to review, and it can help your bottom 30%. Of course, those who you know don't have the listening skills to pay attention for you know more than seven minutes in class, so they can go home, watch it, pause it, go, come back to it, whatever. You know, if we reach just a few more, you know, I think it was worth it. And you know, what it also allows me to do is kind of do the flip classroom as well, which means that some of my students students who have the tech they can go home and watch the lecture that night and then we can spend more class time doing the hands-on stuff or Bloom's taxonomy the upper pyramid stuff um, and of course you know parents uh, they want to see some transparency they want to know what their kids are learning and I've had nothing but good comments from parents uh, along the way while I do this so um, you know it's up to you so of course, you know, uh, my little statement here at the end, we have to find a way to embrace technology to match student parent interest and intrigue, of course, in the new reality of educational uh, competition. So of course, you know, we're in the point where we have to try new things, find what you're comfortable with and give it a shot, you know, or we can just stand still doing what we've always done. Um, and we know what will happen if we do that. So, um, Sorry I took so much of your time this morning, but I hope some of you might uh, you know, find one of these ways interesting. Come talk to me. I'll give you whatever help that I can. Um, so uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.